Hello, I'm Megan Schiller from KDKA TV News, and this is your KDKA News Now update. I've got your top headlines and the latest weather forecast. The Washington County Commissioners voted today on how they're going to handle the recent cyber attack. But as Chris Hoffman reports, some people are questioning the transparency of the entire process. The questions about transparency have been because of secret emergency meetings. Well, the solicitor explained today some of that was because of the deadlines in part set up by the criminals. Thursday's two to one vote by the Board of Commissioners to use up to $400,000 to address the almost $350,000 ransom payment and about $20,000 cost to pay a company to handle the payment. January's cyber attack against the county shut down several county services. Basically paralyzing all of the county's operations. The vote to put this all into motion happened back on February 6th in an unpublicized emergency meeting. Today, the solicitor told us they had to act quickly because the alleged Russian hackers set up a deadline of 3.30 that afternoon. That the hackers had obtained large amounts of data from the county computer system. According to Sweat, the meetings fell under the Sunshine Act for emergency meetings. Ultimately, the county did pay the ransom. Commissioner Larry Magi was not happy because he felt this just invites more attacks from cyber criminals. I just find this repugnant that we're giving in to cyber criminals from another country. Thank you. While board chairman Nick Sherman agreed it wasn't ideal to pay the Russian cyber criminals, he says the data, though, they had access to could be very dangerous. County records have data on children, and Sherman didn't want that on the dark web. Children of Washington County that are in severe need of services, children that have been abused, children that have been abducted. Cyber experts have told KDK in the past they advise groups to not pay the ransom when attacked. At this point, the county says 80% of their system has been restored since paying the ransom. The money to pay for this comes from the American Rescue Plan. In Washington County, Chris Hoffman, KDK TV News. A local business has come to the rescue of vendors left scrambling after the announcement that the Monroeville Convention Center was closing. Shelley Bortz explains how it's helping out. The sting over the surprise announcement that the Monroeville Convention Center will permanently close June 1st and reopen as a Hobby Lobby is still being felt. The news has left a lot of vendors scrambling to find alternate venues to accommodate. We now have a space that we think they can fill. And just when it seems all hope was lost, a local business has swooped in for the rescue. We just finalized a lease in North for Sales for our own event space. 247 Fighting Championships, a combat sports promotion, is transforming the former Phoenix Theater into Sunny Days Arena at the venue, a 27,000 square foot space that will be available for small to mid-size events, such as concerts and gun and craft shows when it's not hosting MMA or grappling. What makes this one unique is that it's two levels. So there's an upper balcony that will have prime viewing of the cage or whatever event is going on downstairs. And then also you add in the food and alcohol component around the edges. Monroeville Mayor Nick Greesock isn't going down without a fight. He tells KDKA TV he and council is prepared to do whatever it takes to keep the convention center doors open. It's a staggering number how much money and revenue and economics is, is driven by the convention center and to lose it in Monroeville would be uh, devastating. While he welcomes all new businesses to Monroeville, including Hobby Lobby, he says there's room for both and is willing to help the arts and crafts store find another spot in the municipality. We're really uh, dedicated to finding a solution here to try to keep the convention center in Monroeville. And now here's First Alert meteorologist Ray Petlin with a look at your weather for the week ahead. These winds are going crazy right now. We have wind gusts in the 45 mile per hour range. A big shake to the camera here on the top of Gateway Center looking towards Acrisure Stadium in the background are wind gusts at 43 miles per hour. And in many cases uh, from Pittsburgh to Washington to Wheeling back to Akron, we're seeing these wind gusts in the 40 to 45 mile per hour range. But just outside of that, not much of a consolation prize with 30 to 35 mile per hour wind gusts in Beaver Falls, Butler in Latrobe as well. So it is quite a gusty evening. The fronts come through and we still have some leftover showers. Now as temperatures fall, these bands of rain, especially up north, could transition to a little snow. Uh, I don't think that's going to be problematic, but where we do see some issues with snow could come this time tomorrow evening into tomorrow night. And it's with this snow out here to the west. And I know it doesn't look like a whole lot, but we have this little area low pressure and a lot of times you find the heaviest of the snow either north or northeast of the low pressure. And this is going to track just to our south and this is going to set us 
us up for accumulating snow and potentially the first measurable snow that we have had for Pittsburgh in the month of February. So we're going to be watching that system as it continues to build towards us and Futurecast here shows us what we're going to be dealing with. So we get through tonight with just maybe a little hit or miss area of snow. Again, this is not problematic. Tomorrow we start the day off. It looks quiet, but it's still going to be quite breezy at the very least throughout the day as we get towards five o'clock tomorrow evening. Some of the first flakes are going to try to touch into Allegheny County, Northern Washington County, Beaver County as well. And then from there, the snow overspreads the area and sticks with us until about 2, 3 a.m. And you'll notice with the darker blues here, that's an indication that the snow is a little steadier or heavier. And you're going to find that largely south of I-70. So Uniontown, Waynesburg, Somerset, Garrett County. Uh, down that way, we're going to see that steadiest of the snow. And then it tapers off quite quickly once you get north of Pittsburgh. So Pittsburgh sort of on the dividing line. Line, but I think uh, some of that snow is going to be moving into town and we'll even have some leftover snow showers in to Saturday. Now, most of this snow is going to fall tomorrow evening into the wee morning hours of Saturday. So before sunrise and for Pittsburgh, we're looking at a coating to two inches working south. Once you get to I 70, it's about two to four expecting out of this one and four to eight in some of the highest uh, ridges out towards uh, Garrett County and Preston County uh, in uh, West Virginia, Maryland down that way. So tonight, 28. The rain's going to end. We're going to have those gusty winds still sticking around. And then tomorrow, most of the day is dry, mostly cloudy. So we will see a couple peaks of sunshine, but it's not till the evening where that snow turns on. That's why tomorrow is a first solar weather day because tomorrow evening, tomorrow night, we're going to have those snow showers and that snow is going to begin during the evening commute. Now into the weekend. Yeah, Saturday, more clouds than anything else. Maybe an early snow shower left over and then come Sunday, we're going to see the sunshine trying to break out and temperatures go back up and we get a spring feel to the forecast right through the middle of next week.